Yo, what is going on, everyone? My name is Nick or the Notorious Fantasy, and in today's video, we're going to be talking about my week number two waiver wire ads for fantasy football in 2021. Inside today's video, I'm going to be talking about some running backs, wide receivers, as well as tight ends that I believe to be must-add players based upon their performance in week number one of the 2021 fantasy football season. But before we get on into the video, I would like to ask if you are new to the channel and you do end up enjoying today's video to please make sure that you hit that subscribe button down below. Below. Not only is it free, I put out content every single day to help you guys win your 2021 Fantasy Football Championship. And while you're down there, whether you are new to my channel or not, please make sure that you hit that like button down below to help boost this video up the algorithm so that more beautiful people like yourself can see today's video. And before we get on into it, I would also like to give you guys a quick word from my friends and my sponsor over at Thrive Fantasy. Thrive Fantasy is a daily fantasy sports and esports app for player props. With Thrive, you can eliminate the countless hours of research and focus only on the top tier athletes that have the biggest impact on the game. Choose 10 out of the 20 available player props to build your lineup. Each prop is assigned a fantasy value for either the over or the under based upon how likely it is to hit. Hit the most props and rack up the most points to win a share of the prize pool. Get in tonight for the Baltimore Ravens versus the Las Vegas Raiders Monday night special. Go ahead and check it out. Use promo code Notorious when you sign up and you'll receive a 100% instant first deposit match up to $100. Again, promo code Notorious and you will get a 100% instant deposit match if it's your first deposit up to $100. And we are back, so without further ado, let's get into the video. We begin with the running back position with Elijah Mitchell of the San Francisco 49ers going up against the Philadelphia Eagles this week in Philadelphia. Raheem Mostert is expected to miss at least eight weeks with that injury that he sustained in week number one up against the Detroit Lions in Detroit. Trey Sermon was scratched for some reason in that week one game. There's a lot of noise that maybe he's not ready to go, that maybe the other running backs in this backfield beat him out in training camp, and that maybe Trey Sermon just isn't that guy, pal, for the team right now. So week one, Elijah Mitchell coming in relief of Raheem Mostert. Week one at Detroit, having 19 carries for 104 rushing yards and one rushing touchdown. Now, Mitchell was not involved even in the slightest in the receiving game. Didn't even get a target in this matchup, which is something that obviously sucks in fantasy football. You're really looking for a running back that gets those receptions, gets those targets. But when you're so involved in the rushing game on a team that likes to run the ball, eh, if you're not able to get a couple of targets every single game, is it really going to matter at the end of the day? On the week, he acquired 16.4 PPR points, 16.4 half PPR points, and 16.4 standard points because guess what he didn't have a single catch a single target any of that on the week he finished his running back 13 in PPR running back number 10 and half PPR and he was the running back number seven in standard tied with DeAndre Swift now as I have described multiple times on this channel I really believe that the San Francisco 49ers like to use this running back by orgy system it's not a running back by committee they use every single player they possibly can Jimmy Garoppolo will run the ball Trey Lance will run the ball, Elijah Mitchell will run the ball, Raheem Mostert was touching the ball, the fullbacks touching the ball, the water boys touching the ball, they bring a fan in, hey, put the fucking pads on, you're going in, man, and then boom, you have all these running backs playing. But at the end of the day here, with Mostert gone for some long length of time, potentially eight plus weeks of the season, Elijah Mitchell is in the perfect scenario here to succeed. Now, would I be surprised at all? If Shanahan was just lying straight to our face about Trey Sermon, out of nowhere, Sermon's active next week, and Trey Sermon just destroys the Philadelphia Eagles defense in Philadelphia now. That would not surprise me at all, because Kyle Shanahan is a little bit, he's kind of like that in my opinion. If you guys remember when he was talking about the NFL draft, he said he wasn't even sure if he was going to be alive tomorrow or something, so he wouldn't even be able to comment on the thing that was happening. This guy's crazy, but at the end of the day, Despite Kyle Shanahan, Elijah Mitchell is certainly worth the number one waiver priority right now before week number two. This guy has the potential to be a week in, week out running back one on your roster that you found off of the waiver wire. Next up, we have Latavius Murray of the Baltimore Ravens going up against the Pittsburgh Steelers in Pittsburgh next week. Now, as I'm recording this, as you are watching this, maybe you're watching it tomorrow, so maybe we're, we already know, but the Raiders versus Ravens has not happened yet. So Le'Veon Bell right now is not active. He's not going to be playing tonight up against the Raiders. Neither will Devontae Freeman. And they're talking about giving a huge workload to Tyson Williams. Tyson Williams, obviously, 
is not available in your leagues. Unless you're playing with a very short bench, unless you're playing with players that maybe don't use the waiver wire at all, Tyson Williams will already have been gobbled up off your waiver wire. So will Latavius Murray play a solid role in this game tonight? I'm not sure. But if he does on such a run-heavy team like the Baltimore Ravens, Latavius Murray is certainly worthy of that second running back priority on the waiver wire. Next up, we have Marky Mock Ingram of the Houston Texans going up against the Cleveland Browns in Cleveland. Cleveland. This Houston Texans team is a running back by committee. It's a three-headed dragon backfield with Maki Mock Ingram, David Johnson, and Philip Lindsay. In week number one versus the Jacksonville Jaguars, Mr. Marky Mark Ingram had 26 rushes for 85 rushing yards and one rushing touchdown with one target. On the week, he had 14.5 PPR points, also half PPR points, as well as standard points because he did not catch the ball once in this matchup, finishing as running back number 16 in PPR, 15 and half PPR, and the running back number 11 in standard. Now, when it comes to Mark Ingram, he is far from a player that I am super excited to start week in and week out because of that three-headed running back system. Would I be surprised if next week David Johnson moseys on out there and is the best running back out of this backfield? No, but I, I would probably put that at, as least likely because it seems like he's third in the pecking order. It's Maki Mark Ingram, then it's Philip Lindsay. Mark Ingram had 26 rushes. And I have zero confidence, unless your running back core is down tremendous, that you would want to start Mark Ingram next week up against the Browns. That's a tough matchup. But on the season as a whole, things happen. You need depth pieces in fantasy football in order to win. And Mark Ingram is a perfect depth piece to throw onto your bench that if you are in a bad scenario, if the bye week bonanza is hitting you, that you can go ahead and throw Mark Ingram in your lineup. Next up, we have James White running back of the New England Patriots going up against the New York football Jets this week. Hold that L, New England. I know a lot of people are New England Patriots fans. I am very sorry about that loss to the Dolphins. Not as a Dolphins fan. I was very excited that we won that game. James White Week one versus Miami, he had four carries for 12 yards with six receptions on seven targets for 49 receiving yards. That's going to be a very typical stat line of James White. Last year, James White basically became fucking Houdini, hocus pocus. He's not getting used. Why? Because Cam Newton, wham bam Cam, just doesn't dump the ball off. But Mr. Mystic Mac Jones likes to do it, which puts James White in a very solid position to succeed, especially this week up against a bad Jets defense. On the week, he acquired 12.1 PPR points, 9.1 half PPR points, and 6.1 standard points, finishing as running back 21 in PPR, 27 and half PPR, and running back number 32 in standard. While he's not useless in standard he is clearly much more useful much more of a piece that you want to acquire in a half ppr or a full ppr league because so much of his value just hinges on the receptions like i said he only had four carries for 12 yards all the value came from the six receptions on seven targets 449 receiving yards if james white slipped through the cracks if no one ended up drafting him in your league he is certainly a perfectly fine pickup on the week next up we have kenneth gainwell running back of the philadelphia eagles going up against the san Francisco 49ers. Now, we did see Miles Sanders get a heavy workload in this game up against the Atlanta Falcons. He took the Atlanta Falcons and he smacked them like four times before they could even move, right? They didn't see any of it coming. They didn't have the reaction time. They got beat down by Mr. Miles Sanders. Miles Sanders, from a season-long standpoint, is a running back that I heavily worried about because I worried about how, hey, there's other running backs behind him. I thought Boston Scott would be very involved in this backfield, but it turns out that Kenneth Gainwell is in that Boston Scott role. In week number one, going up against the Atlanta Falcons, Kenneth Gainwell had nine rushes for 37 rushing yards and one rushing touchdown with two receptions on three targets for six yards. On the week, he acquired 12.3 PPR points, 11.3 half PPR points, and 10.3 standard points, meaning at the end of the week, he finishes running back 20 in PPR, 18 and half PPR, and running back number 18 in standard. While clearly Kenny Gainwell, Kenneth Gainwell, is not going to be this super sexy play that you throw in your lineup every single week, but in a positive game script where you believe that, hey, the Eagles might be up in this game, they might like to include Kenneth Gainwell because this isn't just a CMC workload for Miles Sanders, right? He is not the running back one that is going to be a workhorse running back. That's just not how this system is in Philadelphia. So in a positive matchup, Kenneth Gainwell is certainly fine as a flex, 
obviously in deeper, more deeper leagues. But if something was to happen to Miles Sanders, Gainwell has the opportunity to be a week in and week out, probably top 24 running back in fantasy football. Obviously, if something was to happen to Sanders, if not, like I said, you definitely need that positive matchup for him to be able to be useful in fantasy football. Final running back here. Before we get on into that, please make sure if you have ended up enjoying thus far, you're having a fun time, make sure you hit that subscribe button down below as well as hitting that like button. I would greatly appreciate that. And follow me on Twitter. Twitter, if you haven't already, at NotoriousFNTSY. I tweeted something yesterday, and it got like 2,000 likes, which was very, very nice. Thank you to everyone who liked the tweet. I thought it was pretty funny. So final player here, Philip the Thrillup Lindsay of the Houston Texans going up against the Cleveland Browns in Cleveland. Like I said off the rip when we were talking about Mark Ingram, he is not a guy that I am super excited about. I'm not super excited about Philip Lindsay either. Just like I'm not super excited about David Johnson. But Every week, one of these guys is definitely going to potentially have a good game if the Texans play like how they played last week up against the Jaguars. Now, this matchup up against Cleveland is far from ideal. But, but Nick, uh, the, the Chiefs did, did, did them dirty. They, they played really good against the, uh, the Chiefs played really good against that Browns defense, Nick. I know. They're the fucking Chiefs. They're the best, one of the best teams in the league. Of course, they're going to play good up against a tough defense. Houston, I think, will struggle. But I'm not really talking so much about week number two. I'm talking about the season as a whole. If David Johnson was to go down, if Mark Ingram was to go down, Lindsey is slotted in a very solid role in not a great offense, but Tyrod Taylor really did prove me wrong in that game. I thought that guy was a certified garbage can, and he was out there looking like just... John Elway or something, obviously not looking exactly like John Elway, but you get what I'm saying. He went from looking like just someone that I had not even the slightest of concern about in fantasy football. I was like, why would you ever start Tyrod Taylor? This is a good matchup, but Tyrod Taylor stinks. And then Tyrod Taylor was out there slinging the rock like fucking Matthew Stafford. So what do I know, I guess? But Philip Lindsay is in a solid situation here as the second back behind Mr. Mark Ingram. And especially in a PPR league, I think he should really be able to start sucking in some more targets as the weeks go on. In week number one versus the Jaguars, he had eight rushes for 25 yards and one rushing touchdown with one target. On the week, he acquired 8.5 PPR points as well as half PPR. Same thing goes with in standard because... Just like a lot of these running backs on this list, he did not get a single catch in that game, but he was targeted once. I'm finished on the week as running back 33 in PPR, running back 30 in half PPR, and the RB number 23 in standard. So again, I'm not telling you to go out there and bust your fab load all over Philip Lindsay, but maybe sprinkle a little fab because he could have some value on a season-long standpoint. Here against Cleveland now, definitely got to be pumping the brakes. Next up, we got the wide receiver. If you guys want the quarterbacks to pick up for week number two, I know that is a video that was normally on my channel. I took the video, dribbled it around, threw it onto the awesome -o Fantasy Football YouTube channel. Coming out later tonight, please make sure that you guys do watch that if you want to know about the quarterbacks. I also post an article every single week on Osmo.com about the quarterbacks to be streaming. So wide receivers here. The wide receivers are headlined by Nelson Aguilar of the New England Patriots going up against the New York Football Jets in New York. Week one, up against a tough Miami Dolphins defense. He finds the end zone. He gets five receptions on seven targets. He looks very, very good in that game. He got 18.2 PPR points, 15.7 half PPR points, and 13.2 standard points. On the week, finishing as wide receiver, 21 in PPR. Wide receiver, 21 in standard. Wide receiver, 21 in half PPR. And in all those formats, he was tied with Brandon Cooks. And in standard, he was also tied with, I guess, Jameis' favorite wide receiver, Deontay Harris who we're not going to talk about in this video because I don't really understand what the hell the Saints are doing. I thought it was originally going to be Traquan Smith, and then it's not Traquan Smith. It's a lock. It's Marquez Callaway, and then it's not Callaway. So who knows what's happening there in New Orleans. All I know is that Jameis ate a W in New Orleans, but the game was in Jacksonville. So Nelson Aguilar here, I digress. This was a pretty solid game. Really good game, actually, in my opinion, because he was playing up against a defense that I expect to, held, to hold Mac Jones down. I expect the Dolphins to really give no life to Mac Jones to make sure that Mac Jones stood no chance in this game. Mac Jones played quite well. Aguilar played quite well. Seems like he may be the receiver to own out of the two of Nelson Aguilar and Jacoby Myers. Now, again, it's just a one-game sample. Just one game happened, so don't... That, let me just talk about this again. Please, everyone, do not panic. If you had a player, if you had Aaron Jones, he sucked ass. And you had him, and you're like, damn, I need to trade Aaron Jones. Don't do that. If you had Najee Harris, he sucks. Don't. You're like, oh, man, it's all over. It's been one game. They suck. You fucking, you don't trade him. 
Same thing goes with Saquon. Same thing goes with Zeke. Same thing goes with any player like Devontae Adams, Calvin Ridley, Stefan Diggs. You have these sky-high expectations for these guys, and they take a deuce right on your chest week one. Don't run away. Don't be nervous. Keep holding on. Nelson Aguilar here. Smash matchup up against the Jets. And a solid player for the season as a whole. Next up, we have Sterling Shepard of the New York Football Giants going up against the Washington football team in an all-time snoozer Thursday night football matchup. How do we go from Dallas versus Tampa Bay to New York versus the Washington football team? I digress. Sterling Shepard, wide receiver of the Giants, had in week number one up against the Denver Broncos at home in the Meadowlands, had seven receptions on nine targets for 113 receiving yards and one touchdown, acquiring 24.3 PPR points, 20.8 half PPR points, and 17.3 standard points. On the week, finishing as wide receiver, eight in PPR, 10 and half PPR, and the wide receiver number 10 in standard. Did anyone see that coming? Me, no. I personally didn't love Sterling Shepard going into the season. Now, I did talk about him actually a couple of times about how he's a nice late round dart throw, but there's no way in fuck I would have started him up against the Denver Broncos, up against that tough defense, but some people did, and they reaped the benefit. Here, up against the Washington football team, still a tough matchup, but definitely a guy that I am looking to add. I don't understand why. You back the Brinks truck up. You back it up. For Kenny Galladay, say, hey, Kenny, come here. We got the fucking, it was like uh, one of those when you win the a million dollars, was that the jackpot, whatever that's called. The lottery is what it's called. And they have that huge check and they're holding it. That's basically what they gave to Kenny Galladay. They gave him all this money. And you know what they said? They said, they said, fuck you, pal. Sterling Shepard season. Will that continue to happen? I don't know. But Shepard's clearly a good wide receiver too here in New York, despite Daniel Jones being quite bad. Next up, we have Zach Pascal of the Indianapolis Colts going up against the Los Angeles Rams, which will prove to be a tough matchup. But last week up against Seattle was a pretty tough matchup as well. That was a very bad game for the Colts. Carson Wentz wasn't 100%. I think Carson Wentz will continue to get more healthy and that will even further help out, help out Zach Pascal. T.Y. Hilton probably still going to be missing some time. So, Zach Pascal could be the wide receiver one there. A lot of people, they get down on their knees. Gawk, gawk, gawk. They're fucking sucking off. They're sucking off Michael Pittman. They're giving him the gawk, gawk 9,000. And guess what happened? Guess what happened, pal? Told you guys, Michael Pittman stinks. He's not that guy. Zach Pascal might, might be the guy. Week versus Seattle in week number one. Four receptions on five targets. Almost four for four, like he was at Wendy's. For 43 receiving yards and two tugs. Acquiring 20.3 20 PPR points, 18.3 half PPR points, and 16.3 standard points. On the week, he was wide receiver 16 in PPR, 15 in half PPR, and wide receiver number 13 in standard. If you guys watched the Awesome o Fantasy Football live stream before the game, thank you guys for coming out to that live stream as well as my live stream. I'm live every Thursday as well as Sunday, sometimes on Monday I'll be live as well. So what I want to talk about here with that is that I said, hey, Aiden asked me a question. He said, hey, Nick. Who do you like this week out of the Colts? Do you like Michael Pittman? I said, no, I like Zach Pascal. If you're watching that, you probably wouldn't have started him anyways, but it was a big brain move right there. I knew I knew what was coming for Mr. Zach Pascal, and I like him in this scenario here for the Colts. Next up, we got Tim Patrick of the Denver Broncos going up against the Jacksonville Jaguars. Judy is going to be missing some serious time. The timetable that is put online, they said like six, eight weeks. That's not the normal. Normally, it's way longer than that. Big Booty Judy had an excellent game. He was looking like he was going to be prime for an excellent season with Teddy Two Gloves. But obviously, sucks he gets injured. So, Jerry Judy, I hope you're okay. That's all I will say about that. At New York and the Giants, Patrick had four receptions on four targets like he was at Wendy's. Four for four, 39 receiving yards and one tug acquiring 13.9 PPR points, 11.9 half PPR points and 9.9 .9 standard points. Meaning at the end of the week, he was the wide receiver. 37 in PPR, 34 and a half PPR tied with Danny Amendola. Danny Amendola, baby. And wide receiver number 33 in standard. I should have mentioned this off the rip, but these numbers aren't final. Because, you know, there's still a game tonight. But... Probably going to be relatively close to where they actually finish, depending on where those other wide receivers from the Raiders or the Ravens end up sitting in these rankings. So Tim Patrick, not a sexy name. KJ Hamler got drafted in a lot of leagues. I think Tim Patrick fills the role of Judy better than Hamler. So we're going to go ahead and say that you guys should be picking up Tim Patrick. Next up, we have Jalen Reger of the Philadelphia Eagles going up against the San Francisco 49ers. Devontae Smith, first game First catch ever. That's a tug. I love Devontae Smith. 
last week. I love him for the season. But Jalen Rager, he seems to have whittled his way a roll into this offense. In week number one at the Atlanta Falcons, Rager 6 for 6 for 49 yards and one tug, acquiring 16.9 PPR points. Very nice. 16.9, 13.9 half PPR points, and 10.9 standard points on the week finishing as wide receiver 24 in PPR, 28 half PPR, and the wide receiver number 29 in standard. Now, Jalen Rager is a wide receiver that people were super high on. So high, like Snoop Dogg on a fucking Wednesday night. That's how high. Now, maybe that's not the highest night for Snoop Dogg, but you understand what I'm saying. So very high. Higher than Elon Musk, as uh, Little Uzi would say. So yeah, people were super high on him. He disappoints. This year, no one's talking about him. No one cares. Devontae Smith season. Jalen Rager plays good. Up against the Niners, I'm scared. I don't love this matchup, but he's a guy you can stash on your bench and be very happy with on the season-long standpoint. Next up, we got Rondell Moore of the Arizona Cardinals going up against the Minnesota Vikings. Now, I'm going to talk about Rondell Moore and Christian Kirk at the exact same time. But Nick, Rondell Moore's six, and uh, Kirk is nine. Why Why? Why is Kirk ranked lower? He, he did way better, Nick. I know. I know. But if you know anything about Christian Kirk, and if you're new to fantasy, you are in for a whirlwind with this guy. You are going to put this guy in your lineup in week number two. You will scream to the mountaintops. I have found the next waiver wire stud. I've picked up the second coming of Jerry fucking Rice. And then next week, when the once the game starts, maybe you're halfway through the game, and you're like, wow, why did I do that? Because Christian Kirk goes zero to 100. He is either a 100 or he's a zero, is what I really meant. He's either really fucking good, scoring two tugs in the game, destroying the defense, 70-something yards, like like last week, up against Tennessee, 5 for 5 for 70 yards and two touchdowns, 24 PPR points, 21 and a half half PPR points, and 19 standard points. Wide receiver, 9 in PPR, 8 and half PPR, as well as in standard. Great game, Christian Kirk. Do that again. If you do that next week, then I will believe. Because last year, he fooled me. He fooled me real good because he did it for two weeks in a row, I believe. I seem to remember. And then after that, it was all downhill, like a ski slope. It wasn't good. Christian Kirk is going to fool us again. But, but if no one picks him up, I'm still fine picking him up. I just very much worry about how reliable he will be week in and week out. So with Rondell Moore, week one at Tennessee, four receptions on five targets for 68 yards, one off of being very nice with 6.9, acquiring 10.8 PPR points, 8.8 half PPR points, and 6.8 standard points, point one off of being very nice. On the week, finishing as wide receiver 47 in PPR, 48 and half PPR, and wide receiver number 48 in standard. Now the Arizona Cardinals ran a fucking train, Thomas the Tank Engine level train on the Tennessee Titans. This was a smackdown John Cena versus The Undertaker type of deal here. Destruction. Destruction. Rondell Moore looked really good. I think Rondell Moore is the safer bet on the Arizona Cardinals. And if they continue to have this high uptick, Kyler's looking this good, then man. Man, oh man. Or man, oh woman. Is that even a saying? I don't know. I do not know. But shout out to all of the people watching here, whether you're male or female. I love you guys. Thank you guys all so much for watching these videos. I really appreciate it. So next up, we got Terrence Marshall of the Carolina Panthers going up against the New Orleans Saints. Now, Terrence, Mar Terrence Marshall is not a guy that I'm willing to play this week. He's more of a sit on the bench, chill out with him. Wait for a great matchup. Because Terrence Marshall showed me, at least, that maybe all that shit I saw in the preseason where he's blowing up is correct. Where that's what he's really going to do. Week one up against the Jets in the revenge game for Mono Man Sam. Six targets with three receptions for 26 yards. Nothing special though. 5.6 PPR points, 4.1 half PPR points, 2.6 standard points. Finishing outside of the top 72 receivers in PPR, half PPR, and standard. So it wasn't a great game, right? But what it showed me is, hey, this guy's going to be involved here in Carolina, if it's a positive matchup, if Moore was to go down, if Robbie Anderson was to go down, knock on wood, we don't root for injuries, then maybe, just maybe, Terrence Marshall will be a guy you want to play week in and week out. We already talked about Christian Kirk. Brian Edwards, he hasn't played yet. Has not played yet. This is going to be, this is like a fucking, I'm swinging right, I'm cocking back right now for the swing. I'm going to swing here, and maybe it's a miss. Maybe the ball's in the catcher's mitt by the time the, uh, the live stream's over. Or maybe the thing's out of the park or by the time the game's over. Or maybe it's out of the park. Maybe Brian Edwards was the call. Could be the wide receiver one in Las Vegas. We shall see tonight going up against the Steelers next week. Again, we already talked about Kirk. Final player, Jamison Crowder of the New York Football Jets going up against New England. He could play week two. There's potentially plays in week two. No one's really talking about him. 
Could he be the guy? I mean, Elijah Moore didn't look all that good. Corey Davis was the clear guy. But if this offense is throwing a lot, they're throwing the pigskin around, then Jamison Crowder, who was a target monster last year and in prior seasons, could be very involved here in the Jets offense. Now on to the waiver wire tight end ads. Again, if you guys have ended up enjoying, make sure you hit that subscribe button as well as the like button. And follow me on Twitter, at NotoriousFNTSY. First tight end here, we got Jared Cook of the LA Chargers going up against the Dallas Cowboys. Jared Cook, I thought he was in a shitty matchup up against the Washington football team. I was like, yeah, you know what? Maybe don't play him. Like I said, you could pick him up. You could play him if you're in a bad spot. And then he balls out 10.6 PPR points, 8.1 half PPR points, 5.6 standard points, 5 receptions on 8 targets for 57 receiving yards. Gronk did unholy things to the Cowboys. So maybe Jared Cook can do the exact same thing. Next up, we got Jawan Johnson of the New Orleans Saints going up against the Carolina Panthers. With Jared Cook going, you know, just talked about him. He's on Chargers now. Open the nice door. Open the door for Jawan Johnson. Very nice game out of Jawan Johnson up against the Green Bay Packers. He had three receptions on three targets for 21 receiving yards and two touchdowns, giving him 17.1 PPR points, 15.6 half PPR points, and 14.1 standard points. Now, every not every week, Jameis is going to throw five touchdowns, like seven yards. He literally had like, not seven yards, but you know what I mean. He barely threw the ball, throws five touchdowns, zero INTs. That's not going to happen every week. You're going to get in these games where it's a boat race with famous Jameis. That's what I expected it to be, a boat race up against the Packers, but instead they didn't have to do that. They could just hand the ball off, and, you know, just walk out of there with the W. Eat that W, famous Jameis Winston. So I like Juwan Johnson, but I'm not 100% confident just yet, but I would play him up against the Panthers. Next up, we got Tyler Conklin of the Minnesota Vikings going up against the Arizona Cardinals in Arizona. Oh, oh man, Nick, did, did you see what the Cardinals defense did, did to Ryan Tannehill? Oh, man, why, why do you want to start Tyler Conklin? Because that was just very bad. Don't see that happening again. That was very, very bad for the Tennessee Titans. I don't think we're going to see that with the Vikings. Appeared to be the clear number one tight end in this on this team. Obviously, Chris Herndon moseyed his way on there. How involved will he be? I'm not sure in the future. But right now, it seems like Tyler Conklin is that guy at Cincinnati having four receptions on four targets for 41 receiving yards, 8.1 PPR points, 6.1 half PPR points, and 4.1 standard points. Maybe he scores a touchdown next game, and it looks a lot better. Final player here, Cole Comet of the Chicago Bears going up against the Cincinnati Bengals with Jimmy Graham still in town. Seems like, you know how they always say in those cowboy movies, this room ain't big enough for the both of us, you know? Maybe the room is big enough for the both of them. Psych. Psych. The room is only big enough for Cole Comet. Jimmy Graham, he's still there. But it's Comet season, baby. It is. What happens when they get rid of Dalton and they throw fields in? I don't know. But what I saw was promising. At LAR, at the Rams, five receptions on seven targets for 42 receiving yards, 9.2 PPR points, 6.7 half PPR points, at 4.2 standard points. When will they go to Justin Fields? Let me know down below in the comments. Will it be this week? Will it be next week? Will it be the week after? I'm not sure. But all I know is I don't want to see Andy Dalton's sorry ass play quarterback ever again. No, just kidding. I hope he stays to the NFL, but he could be a nice backup. Love you, Andy Dalton. So thank you guys all for watching. I love you guys so much. We hit 17,000 subscribers over the weekend i appreciate that so much it's absolutely insane and it's not me it's you guys that do that it's you guys that click like that hit the subscribe button that leave the comments that help this happen thank you genuinely for everything i love you guys stay safe good luck watching the game tonight for the las vegas raiders going up against the baltimore ravens i love you guys as always Come on.